Well, hello everyone and welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV travel, RV living, and RV lifestyles. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, relax, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everybody. This is Rob. This is episode 59. Finally back from Washington State. Yes, we purchased a boat. And yes, we got some stories for you. Okay, stay tuned. Well, it's sure great to have my studio back and have my microphone back. I uh, realized my last two recordings have uh, more of a tinny sound and you can hear everything. Uh, Back in uh, RV where I have my podcast equipment all set up and (laughs) very grateful I got it. And yeah, we just got back yesterday. And uh, yes, uh, you'll see as time goes on that we... uh, purchase a boat and now there's a videos going on about that and so uh, when you get a chance go view, view those and you can see what we went through so it took me over 15 days to get this project over with and oh my gosh that was a heck of a lot of driving I think I did over 4,272 miles I believe was a total amount going from Arizona all the way up to Washington and then coming back so ultimately, we ended up taking the boat to Lake Powell, which looks like a beautiful area, and I cannot wait to start doing photography up there. So right there at Page is where the dam is that creates Lake Powell, which then becomes the uh, Colorado River, which goes to Lake Mead, and that creates another <laughs> dam, which is the Boulder Dam at Las Vegas. But talk about beautiful, and that's also the beginning of the Grand Canyon. And this uh, lake, Lake Powell, is made up gigantic thing, and it crosses uh, into Utah and Arizona, and uh, has all these fingers to go into, and some beautiful things. And apparently, a lot of the arches were covered up by water. Uh, when they flooded that and and the other thing was kind of interesting is they actually created Lake Powell after they created Lake Mead and uh, I think it took over 17 years they said to fill the lake and uh, wow Uh, just just to think about that is amazing so uh, uh, I do want to invite you that as Right now we're telling the story about the 15-day adventure and bringing that boat down here. Uh, But after that, we're going to also have a lot of videos coming out of uh, the page area. Not only just from the boat, we have like this weekend we're going back up to actually add some equipment to it. The following weekend, which is the three-day weekend, we'll be back up there in a different way. We actually have motel rooms. We're not staying in the boat. Uh, We're going to be going down to... uh, do some tourism of the page area and, and get and, and there's some really cool things we want to show you and do films on and what will be fun is my granddaughter and my grandkids and of course my son-in-law will be uh, down there too so we've got a family outing so uh, it, I get a different perspective on things so and probably uh, some new faces on our video that we don't usually uh, record I try to give my daughter as much privacy as possible so I don't throw a, a camera in her face all the time so yeah lots of exciting stuff coming up and so uh, uh stay tuned uh, <laughs> you're gonna see some cool stuff i don't even know what's all coming yet <laughs> well let's move on now what you've heard me talk about before from that trip that we did to washington back was the the hotel costs and I know I'm bringing this up again but what a shocker it wasn't just a little bit of cost we're talking some primary costs I bet you I dropped close to two maybe fifteen hundred dollars in motels just to do that trip thank goodness on the way back we had the boat um which we just parked one uh, see one time we started to stayed in a casino parking lot and slept in the boat and then the next time we got down to Lake Powell got there too late to launch, so we slept in the boat in the parking lot there. 
And then the following night, we were actually in the water and slept the night. So that saved us big time money. But uh, this is my point on all this RVing and boating thing. And I'm going to start combining the two more because I am running into more and more people that not only live full time in their RVs, but they live in their boats too simultaneously or back, well, sorry, back and forth. And I ran into another person who has a refrigeration business that uh, helps do refrigeration on boats and regular refrigeration. And uh, that's how he makes his living. And he have an RV in Page, lives in it full time. And then a lot of times they go out in their boat for days in, on end on Lake Powell, which is enormous. If you get a chance, pull up Lake Powell in Arizona, Utah area. And look how enormous that thing is. And I'm finding that people are doing the combination. And it's I like the idea because to live in an RV all the time, sometimes you need to change it up. And the cost, once again, once you get a boat, uh, like where we're moored, it's about, a hundred, I'm going to say, an average of three fifty a month to moor a boat up there. And I think we have to pay for electrical uh I think and um, so still it's the overhead is really low just like RVs now actually that's lower than my RV my RV is like six almost 700 a month where I'm at now but still uh, low rent um, if you want to be a minimalist then there you go it's just change up from living in an RV to going out in the water and you can still live on your boat for a few days or stay on it for depending what kind of boat you get um it will have all the same accommodations as an rv they're both rvs <laughs> it's just I was like, and there's a lot to learn from the boater side of things and that combine with the rv world so um don't like freak out because uh we use the word boat as both do the same thing you travel in both both give you opportunities to see things you normally would never see and they're both can be cost effective if you go about it right for example there's a guy who's selling a boat on the lake that has twin screw it's an older boat it's 1972 trawler type boat beautiful boat and he's only selling it for eight thousand dollars and it's not a bad deal and so there's bargains out there to be made and people and just like them they love what they're doing and they want to upgrade and I think they're going to move to Florida and buy a bigger boat. And uh and we're not just talking about sailboats anymore. We're talking about power boats. And of course, yes, me and Sherry did the power boat and I, I'll explain and we actually do a video breakdown of why we decided to go that route instead of the sailboat route. So yeah, uh <laughs> It was really neat. We met all kinds of neat people and still are meeting lots of neat people who've never even heard of RV travel type video things and, and they're not even doing stuff on boating. They're just people out there living their lives, doing things that we all take for granted as far as the RV world. They're using RVs and they didn't even know there was RV channels out there and they're using their boat and they didn't even know there was boating channels out there and so... I feel like, wow, what an opportunity for us. We'll talk about both and how they combine together. And I, I don't know how you can define as RV living or lifestyle to be one particular way. Uh, it's impossible. And everybody's doing it differently. And so that's what we want to concentrate on. All the different variations of RVing and recreation that can go with it. And keeping our costs down and being minimalist at no matter what kind of income, whether you have comfortable income, really good income, or low income, we'll try to address all of those. So, <laughs> anyway, lots of interesting stuff, lots of things to talk about. Let's move on. So, let's talk about Lake Powell right now, and I'm going to talk about the boat launch marina area. And you do not have to own a boat to enjoy what we got to see for the first time. And I'll tell you more as I learn more. This is just one weekend that I've seen down there that, oh my gosh, it's like its own world. It's, it's, it's 
kind of out there and you feel like you're out in the nowhere and you, and you show up at this marina and there's hundreds of, I would say, yeah, hundreds of houseboats along with regular boats out there and then there's different boats you can charter. I did not see sailboats. That was this interesting thing. But it's a community or city in itself and it's amazing. It's got this giant floating dock and giant boat launches uh, designed for the water you know, recedes over uh, over the summer as it's being used for water for the different cities and stuff. But anyway, uh, uh, this big marina that floats out there is like a little city, and it's got restrooms and showers. And then in the middle of it, it's got a regular store, a marina, um, you might say registration area. It kind of controls all the, the rents and stuff like that. And uh, uh, restaurant. Uh, this particular marina has not one restaurant on the marina itself, and then up above on the um, uh, land area, there's three other restaurants of all different types of food, whether you want to be a little fancy or just simple uh, coffee shops. And, of course, there's a motel resort there. And uh, so, oh, my gosh, endless things to do. Sw and, then of course, there's swimming pools, hot tubs, things like that, uh, that you can just go and stay in a resort. The other thing is the boathouses appear to be very popular there. And some people, I guess, rent the boathouses and never leave the dock. And um, I, I'll find out more as I learn more about the boathouses. I've never done that before. Uh, but it looks like a lot of fun. And boy, there's all kinds of shapes and sizes. And it looks like a lot of fun. And uh, uh, the other thing is uh, all this is kind of spread out away. So everything's done in little carts. Uh, or little um, uh, golf courts. And so all you have to do is like you get up on the hillside. You can see the marina's way down there and all that. You just sit there and wait for a golf cart to show up and a guy will drive you. There's drivers everywhere. And you want to give them a tip. We give them like a buck. And uh, uh, they'll take you down right down by your boat with all your goodies. And uh, if you need something hauled, they actually have an ATV with a trailer. And you just have them radio it in from the store. Uh, wherever you're at, the ATV or um, golf cart will show up at you, wherever you're at uh, after four or five, maybe ten minutes at the most, <clears throat> and take you where you want to go anywhere in this complex. And this thing's gigantic. It's hard to describe how big it is. And I, I urge you to watch our videos in the future so you can see just how enormous everything is. And then, of course, the scenery, are just even if you don't go out in the water, Oh my goodness, talk about scenery and all the rock for, uh, formations that you can think of. But I, I, I just couldn't get over the, the uh, immenseness of everything and the ease of getting around. Once you've parked your car, you can pretty much do anything you want at that resort and just get the little carts and keep a couple of dollars in your pocket. And the little uh, drivers, you know, just give them a little tip. Uh, that's how they make some extra money. And uh, it's really not that expensive. And you can stay there on a, you know, on a budget or you can really go all out. But the big thing is just what amazing pl place. Now, in the future, Shuri and I and our daughter and their family, we have motels set up in Page, which is just five, ten miles away, uh, once you go across the dam. <laughs> and that's amazing. I, I can't wait to get more pictures of that. And we're going to go see uh, what they call the horseshoe, which you've seen the photo of the Grand Canyon, where it's got that big U-shape of the river going through there. We're going to get pictures of that and try to catch uh, uh, parts of the Grand Canyon from there. And it's just this endless things to do. And so... I think the worst thing you could do is not give yourself enough time. Uh, I think we have three days. That's not going to be enough time, but we're going to be going up there more. So what we missed on the three days, uh, are, uh, we'll be able to you know catch later. It's the kids I worry about. They only get three days up there, and they gotta, you know, they're working nine to five and doing the best they can, and they got three kids, and it's pretty expensive for them. And once again, we're talking about the motel rooms. Oh my goodness, talk about expensive. I think it costs Sherry and I like $700 for three days. That's a lot. And I don't even know what my daughter paid, but it's got to be over 1000 So, wow. 
motels. And so <laughs> if you got an RV or you got a boat and you want to go to Lake Powell, put those in the water and stay in them. You'll save yourself some money. Those motels are just killers. And, uh, of course, you know, it's supply and demand. So when you go to the place that's popular, they're going to charge you like crazy. But anyway, this Lake Powell uh, is amazing. And one thing we're kind of shocked is, and Sherry and I are kind of worried about it, is you don't use anchors and then use a dinghy to go to shore. You actually land your boat under the shore, which are sandy. Then you take your, uh, we, we just bought two 100-foot ropes off to the stern and the port side of the boat and then you take little hand anchors and put them into the sand and hold your boat in place with a, uh, when you put your bow into the sand and lift your, uh, in my case, uh, we, we're not stern drive, we actually have out, out drives. So you pull your out drives up before you, uh, you kind of coast into the shore and then <laughs> land it and then everybody kind of hops out and you plan on getting wet, which is okay because it's gorgeous and warm up there. And then you bring these two uh, um, bow lines out and then mount them into the sand or uh, wherever you can to hold the boat in place from leaning one side or the other from the wind and stuff. Never done that before. So that'll be quite the adventure for learning that tactic of um, going to these different places uh, to all these little adventures that you can go into these little crevices and place. And we do have a dinghy too to take down the really thin, um, and I hear there's some beautiful little canyons you can take your boat in. It's better, you know, you don't want to take your big boat into, you can take your dinghy into, and we do have a motor. And uh, I guess this, this is amazing stuff over in uh, Lake Powell. And you could do the same thing with a houseboat. Uh, a lot of houseboats actually have uh, skidoos or whatever they call them, uh, jet skis uh, mounted on the back that you can use to go into the little um, interesting uh, canyons that <laughs> the water is flooded. So anyway, what a great place. So I'm really recommending that someday, if you ever get the chance, go to Lake Powell and check out all the amenities and all the fun you can have and I'm telling you your kids will have a good time and you'll have a good time I forgot to also mention it uh, from the segment before is there is RV parking and camping there too and that's another way to go and keep your costs down and uh, it was so neat to see all the families down there camping and you can hear them at nighttime uh, <laughs> just doing family stuff of uh, sitting around. I don't know if they're around campfires. It, it could be sometimes people bring their own little fire pits and uh, you can hear the laughing and the kids having a good time. And then the kids are uh, <laughs> still doing the Pokemon Go stuff. But hey, they're just hiking around, getting exercise. I can't complain about that. So if it takes Pokemon Go for him to get out about and go to investigate the um, the facilities and the compound and the region, hey, so be it. So anyway, get those kids out of the house. Get their hands dirty. Put shorts on them. Throw them in the water. It was great. So anyway, I uh, forgot to tell you that part. <laughs> the other thing I was going to tell you about was Cinder. You know, I got to keep, keep you guys up on Cinder. So Cinder... Did this whole trip with me so she was wonderful and we tried to throw her into some of the videos and and um anyway but the funniest part was i told you about these carts that take you all around in the resort at lake powell well uh getting cinder on a cart took a little um practice because we couldn't figure out what the best way is and so what we found with her is if we sit at the front seat of a golf cart and she kind of uh, sit her down while she's facing you and she can put her head in your lap. She's set to go. Any other position and dog just kind of freaks out. It's like, this is not working. I want off this thing. So it took us a little practice. And luckily, some of our drivers were so patient. And plus, they just love Cinder. Uh, till we found what works. And so <laughs> finally, we found a way to transport Cinder on those carts. But it was quite, quite humorous. Um... The other thing is we're kind of trying to figure out is how well the boat seems so odd to her. She's just never been on anything like it. And it'll be really interesting when we take her up and uh, 
we actually do some swimming off the back and stuff like that and see if she goes in and out and see uh, she starts getting more comfortable. And, uh, um, you know, you keep thinking, well, maybe this is just too much for her. So, anyway, we've gotten home here at the RV, and now she just seems bored to death compared to all the things she's been doing for the last two and a half weeks. So, uh, yeah, I never think that you're over overstimulating your dog. I think... All this adventure is good for them. Uh, change, constantly showing change to the dogs, keeps them from uh, getting protective or getting them uh, uncomfortable when things are odd around them. They're more of observant other than protective, and so I think it's finding it's it's a good thing for Cinder to be able to have new surroundings around her constantly, but still bring her back to safety of things she knows all the time. So. Kind of interesting, but yeah, she was uh, great. Uh, motel rooms, she was wonderful. And uh, uh, she still never forgets 4 o'clock, tells me it's dinner time. But yeah, she handled the whole trip. And it was really nice to know I got her out of the RV and she's not being cooped up. And uh, she really travels well. And if you watch the videos, you can see she just sleeps in the back. And then every time I slow down, she stands up and taps the window and says, Open my window, I want to see what's going on. And then goes back to sleep and anyway so yeah she did all right on that trip and yeah for those of you who say well Robbie you never talk about the cat much well the cat stays home all the time and we uh, Shuri what you didn't realize well maybe you will with the videos but Shuri flew up twice up to Washington the first time is when we wanted to see the boat I would be darned if I do that alone and because you know you got to get my wife's approval and so she flew up for that time. She loved the boat. She kind of gave me the thumbs up as like, I really like that boat, Rob. And then following day, flew back to Arizona and worked for almost the whole week. Then um, on the, as we made the offer and all that stuff, we're kind of killing time as paperwork was shuffling. And so then she flew back up to Central Oregon. So I went 400 miles by myself. Met her in Central Oregon, which I had a chance to see her folks. for So we kind of had a layover of a day. And then started together taking the boat down south of Lake Powell. So anyway, so the cat was actually home for about five days alone. But we have this neighbor girl that takes, uh, will walk your pets and stuff like that. So we asked her if she'd come in. Just visit with the cat. Didn't really have to feed her anything, um, but just make sure everything was good. But just give her some attention. Just play with her, pet her, just let her have some human uh, <laughs> contact. And and it really did make a difference because when we get home, usually the cat goes, You love bear, low, meow, meow, meow. And this was time it was a little bit less uh, dramatic. So that definitely helped uh, Lily. But Lily, uh, yeah, well, it's her RV. <laughs> You know how that goes. So she lets us live in her RV, and that's just how it goes. So she's perfectly content here as long as she has her one window open where the hummingbirds come up and feed, and she just sits there all day going nuts. And uh, I just, I'm telling you, the best stimulation for a cat, put a hummingbird feeder right off the window of your RV and a little place for the cat to stand. And you, you may get your screen damaged and whatever, but you can replace those pretty easy. So uh, let the cat have some stimulation. Put a hummingbird in front of the window. <laughs> I tell you, it works. Okay, in this, in this segment, I want to actually go into um, the boat details a little bit. And I don't, because you're an RVer, start running away on that. I want to see tell you why we did what we did to blend it with RV lifestyle. <laughs> And really, this is still an RV talk radio. This is just another tool. It would be no different than me saying I just bought a new golf cart to get around the RV park. Or I just bought a scooter. Whatever. Well, we have a boat. And I want to tell you why we did what we did and why we bought the model we did. So what we bought was a 1999 Maxim. Uh, 28 foot. And it's really 30 some odd feet because we have this giant swim platform. Twin screw. Two engines. Uh, Merc, uh, 4.3 Merc engines on it, uh, Bravo 2 outdrives with stainless steel uh, props. Um, it's not a perfect boat, it's got, um, but we liked it because the owners before put, and we have the receipts and everything, a lot of money into engines and outdrives, and that's the main heart and soul of a boat. 
And then everything else that's kind of left is the, some cosmetic things. So it's not the perfect boat, and we don't have big investment. In fact, the cost of this boat, we got the boat, a trailer, a mean heavy-duty trailer, a dinghy, and a four-stroke outboard. And, and those were fairly new. Those were like 2010. Uh, the go with this boat. And the whole package was the cost of a trailer. Not a fifth wheel, like a trailer. Less than a trailer, actually. New one. Um, so fairly uh, reasonable. Um, not a big overhead expense. Well, it is, but it's not as bad as it could have been. And like the sailboats we're looking at, we're, we're talking 100000 there. We're talking one-third of that, okay? <laughs> that give you an idea? So what we wanted to do is have a boat that was transportable, so but as big as possible. And uh, and for the room and, and be able to sleep in it overnight for one or two or three nights, uh, have, you know, restroom facilities. Uh, I always tell people, the people, reason old people buy RVs is because they have bathrooms in them. Well, same thing with boats. <laughs> you want a bathroom in it. I don't care what you say. Anyway, um, lots of places, you know, and we wanted a little room for if we had the grandkids and stuff could spend the night or take naps and things like that. So, wanted two engines because if one goes down, you have a 50% chance of getting back with the other. <laughs> And then I got the small dinghy with the motor. If all else fails and all the engines fail, I can tow a little bugger with my little dinghy. So, and we do have a nice seven-foot Livingston boat or dinghy to go on the back. And, and you'll see those in the video. So, now we have this boat that we can, if we move, because what we've discovered is Sherry and I want to be a full-time travelers. And I've told you about this before, but it's just not happening right now. As, and we just both turned 55. And also, by the way, we just had our anniversary. We're 36 years um, married and and still haven't killed each other. So we're doing good. Anyway, we wanted this new tool to kind of stimulate things to get out of this rut that we're in. We're kind of bummed out that we can't really travel because you hear me talking about we just don't want to spend that big time money on Obamacare, you might say, where we could use that money to buy a boat. <laughs> Anyway, so there you go. You want to, I know I got a couple of listeners that say, you keep talking about that. Well, I'm sorry, but that's just a pet peeve of mine. And boy, I, you know, and, and I, I just think seniors should be treated better. Anyway, <laughs> so now um, when, and it will take a long time to get tired of Lake Powell, and, and it's still quite a drive from here. It's about 300 miles. So you're looking at five hours to get up there and, and back. So uh, it can be a little tiresome, but uh, the adventure would be nice. Um, but if it gets too cold up there or we don't like to do the drive anymore, I can pull that boat out of the water and move it to Lake Pleasant, which is only 50 miles away. And if I really wanted to and, want to spend, and it's a little more spendy, I can take the boat over to San Diego. And if some reason, sure, he gets the opportunity to go back up to Washington State, which I'd love to go back up sometime, we can haul it right back up there again. I'm not stuck at being having a boat that's too big to take to different areas. Heck, who knows? I mean, we could end up in Texas and still take the boat with us. So um, if we have to leave the, <laughs> to a different area... It might be a little bit of shuffling going on, kind of craziness uh, as we're getting in our new position. But it looks like we're going to be here around here in uh, Fort McDowell area for a while. And uh, so instead of being all bummed out that we can't travel like we want to, and I even have viewers are y y yakking at me saying, well, you're not true RVers, you're not traveling. Well, that, true RVers aren't necessarily <laughs> traveling. And the more I've been talking about that, the more I'm getting comments going, yeah, Rob, that's what we do too. We use all kinds of tools. And so um, no matter what, our base is RV. And I just want to remind you that. And so uh, don't get all caught up. I'm just saying because we have an RV. Thank God we have an RV. We can do this stuff. And and our job also, as a, in, this is an entertainment channel. That they all are. Um, otherwise, you guys, that's what we're trying to do is get people to want to come back so you're entertained. Uh, whether it's a knowledge-based thing or fun-based or joking or just get to know our family. 
uh, that's what we kind of want to do is we want you to be a member of our family and uh, uh, get to meet Rob and Sherry and, and our uh, our family and our pets and the whole works. And we just kind of want you uh, um, to enjoy. If you can't do this kind of lifestyle, if things aren't working, then maybe you can live through our eyes a little bit and enjoy some of the places we take you. And that's what it's all about. So that's what the boat's all about. Um, the boat is... Uh, um, there's a few things we got to, you know, eventually I'm going to have to put new canvases on it. Uh, little things like a couple doorknobs are kind of need to replace. We, uh, uh, other than that, it really isn't a whole lot of things to do on it. And, uh, but you know, give it time. Uh, boats break just like RVs are just one of the same. I'm telling you. Um, and so, uh, we're just kind of getting used to it. It's really spooky. The, you know, we launched it got in the water, had a little trouble with one of the engines um, at, at first getting fired up, um, but everything fired up eventually, just fine. Um, I think, you know, 1,500 miles of jarring around kind of got um, um, <laughs> the engine. I think one of the carburetors got uh, flooded. And uh, going out in the water the first time, don't know the water at all because, you know, they have sandbars and stuff like that. So, uh, we went out for a couple of hours and just, uh, you know, we were kind of like, ooh, man, this is awesome. We finally got back on the water. We've done this before in other places, but nothing like this before. And, uh, like, you know, and then we also saw the weather, uh, monsoon type thing was going to be coming in pretty soon. So we took the boat to the slip for the first time using the twin screws. I don't know if you know anything about du dual engines, but you can literally steer your boat with the two engines. So it was um, my bucket list to always have a boat with a twin screw. I've always wanted that. And so I brought the boat in, got kind of parallel uh, or right to where our slip was, flipped the engines, uh, one in reverse, one in uh, forward, rotates the boat on a p pivots it, and just hit forward and it went right into the slip. I'm going, it wasn't real windy, so it made it easy, but oh, that was so cool to have the dual engines there and then also just the fact that you know you can get quite a ways away from your home base uh, having a backup engine is going to be nice to have and uh, uh, fuel wise if you're not going nuts it maybe burns four to five gallons an hour um, if you're not going nuts and if you're cruising and really opening her up you're going to be burning eight to ten pretty easy if not more so yeah it's not cheap but I, I live in an RV, so my overhead's low. And so I can afford to do this kind of stuff. Um, it's, is it easy? No. Is it extra money? Not really. But it's because we live the way we do, um, we can't afford to have this other toy or resource, we'll, we'll call it. So anyway, I wanted to kind of tell you why we did what we did, why we picked the size we did. It's about as big as you can, can get. To put on a trailer without having to go with uh, oversized load type thing, and uh, that's a, it was still a lot of boat, and my truck performed well. Uh, remember, I have a 2002 Ford uh, one ton with the 7.3 liter diesel in it. It did a great job, and the trailer that I have for that, a tough trailer, it truly was a tough trailer, and it did a great job too. Since we got back, uh, the RV looks like it's in pretty good shape. Um, you know, we weren't gone that long, but everything seems to be uh, uh, surviving all the little monsoons we've had lately. Uh, the big surprise we had was when we got to Lake Powell with the boat, launched it, we had the trailer, the boat trailer. And so we were going to keep it at a boat place up there, and it was like $32 a month. And I couldn't do it because I didn't have copies of the registration and and uh, insurance, which I do have. I mean, uh, it, they're kind of in the mail type thing. The insurance is taken care of. That was done before I even got the boat. And uh, having a copy of the binder and then having a copy of the registration, didn't have that available at the time. So then we decided, well, let's take the trailer down to our place here at uh, Fort McDowell because they have a storage area for that and we'll just pay the consequences. 
So we come rolling in and it was like, all right, let's go check in with the office. We'll go find out how much it is to leave the trailer in the uh, storage area. And what a pleasant surprise. It was free. <laughs> For anybody that stays here at the RV park here at uh, Fort McDowell, uh, can store something over there for free as long as you're here. So, oh my goodness, talk about the universe lining up for us. So we got free storage for our boat trailer till we're ready to move. You know, use it. We can take it in and out all we want. Uh, so, anyway, that was kind of a pleasant surprise. Um, it's amazing in two weeks that I've been gone, how many different RVs have come in and out. Uh, some have still been, you know, still here. that have been here for a long time, like us. And then, um, I don't know, just, you come in and go, wow, <laughs> new rigs, they're all in. Uh, one of the most amazing things I did see was a really large motorhome uh, up there that uh, looks like they must have had a little boat, uh, one of those little f um, uh, pontoon boats. And how they were able to, they had a boat trailer in the back of this 40-foot motorhome. How in the heck they managed to get that thing down the long ramps. They're really long if you know anything about these reservoirs. Launch a boat and then get that bugger back up the hill. Wow. Uh, you got to get tip your hat to that person. Uh, that must that was quite an achievement. <laughs> and so you'd be amazed what people do with their RVs. Jeez. Anyway, but... Uh, yeah, here at the park here, it's been uh, nice and quiet. Um, they still have trouble with people that won't pick up after their pets. And uh, a couple of times, it's like they put signs up like, we're going to close this pet park if you can't pick up. And Sherry and I, I hate it when I have to. I mean, we make it a rule. We make sure and take care of anything Cinder does. But I just it's really irritating when it's like, I don't want this park shut down. So we'll pick up after someone else's pet because they won't take care of the park and it gets quite irritating and so I just know why can't you take responsibility for your pets if you're gonna have a pet you're gonna travel you're gonna have to pick up after them and and I gotta admit I mean in the old days nobody wanted to do that kind of stuff but you know if enough people are using facilities like this We've got to do that, and you've got to do it. Otherwise, we're going to lose the lose the privilege. How many places have you gone that you cannot take your pet? And it's been a lot. And uh, I don't know. It's just getting frustrating. But i got to admit, there's a lot of places have been really open-minded letting us bring pets in. Like, we're in Central Oregon. Never thought of the day that it was kind of hot, and I didn't want to leave Cinder in, so we went into a Bimart. And by gosh, she said, yeah, I bring the dog in. In fact, they even had treats at the thing. So, uh, yeah, it's getting nice that there's places that you can still take your pet. And uh, But once again, if you can bring your pet into a Home Depot or things like that, and it's a, um, uh, a leg lifter or something like that, that kind of stuff is going to really ruin it for all of us. So anyway, be responsible. And, and um, if you get the privilege to bring your pets to a store and stuff like that don't do stupid things um that will cause the store to change their policies saying all right no more we just we just can't have these pets coming in anymore so i don't know. <laughs> one subject to the other but yeah guys the rv park um i i just can't say enough uh, about this it's eagle Eagle View RV Park here in Fort McDowell. Great place to stay. Highly recommend it. Friendly people. Cost is uh, um, average, if not a little bit, well, a little, it's average. Um, the facilities are great. Office is thing. Everything's clean. And you're treated well. And security is over the top. Uh, drivers from security and the um, uh, casino across the street. Uh, all work together and, and constantly. We see a security truck in here, or car, dozens of times a day. Dozens. And uh, also they're looking after the things in the storage uh, area. So nice, nice place. RV's doing well. Nothing's broken. And um, so lack of stories as far as what's going on with the RV. Because it's just not broken. And... <laughs> It's a Montana, guys. If you want an RV, it doesn't seem to be breaking a lot. They do break. I mean, things happen. I mean, they break. But we've been real fortunate. We're really happy with our 
or Montana. So that's the latest news with the RV. You know what fascinates me? <laughs> and I'm not sure if it fascinates you or not, but have you ever driven kind of out in the boonies, like out in Page and uh, between Page and say Flagstaff? You see people living in houses. They're not super nice houses or anything, but they're, they're, I mean, they're out there. And you wonder, how do they live there? <laughs> if you're like, how do they make enough money to live there? Uh, you know, a lot of times if you're older, you tend to want to be around population. So there is medical support and things like that. Are these young people? Are they older people? Are they people who really just don't want to be around other people? And how do they afford to, you know, are are they have jobs? Is there jobs even around there? Seriously, if you've driven like between, say, Reno and Las Vegas in this desert area, and you go through these, some of these little towns of, uh, oh, there's just little teeny things, and you say, how... How do these people live there? Uh, are they... I just love to <laughs> have somebody somebody really brave with a video camera and interview microphone knock at each door and say, How do you live here? <laughs> and some of them are shacks and some of them are decent houses. Um, I noticed, I think a lot of the places I saw between Page and Flagstaff was... Uh, Navajo Nation area, so some of them are living from the uh, uh, re reservation support, I guess. But uh, um, but there's more than just that. It's just uh, small towns. I mean, they're truly out there. They're, they're desert areas. There's nothing, no, no yard to them other than sagebrush and sand and uh, desert and snakes. <laughs> Whatever. I just, how do people... Why do people live like that would be one. How do people live like that? Are they tend to be older folks? Mid, um, mid middle age? Young? Are they just want to be away from society more? Um, it just perplexes me. And I'm sure, you know, it's pure ignorance on my part, I guess, of uh, not understanding that lifestyle. But uh, that's a whole nother subject in its own of, um, you know, it's kind of like tiny house living. Some of those places are really out in places that you just like, okay, well, they like the solitude. Um, but what about all those other questions like power and electricity and income and uh, are, the, you know, is it people that might be in um, medical disability that like, all right. They can afford to live affordably way out in the Thule's and have their peace and quiet and still have a small community to be around. I don't know. Or they just w want to be detached a little more but still want a house. I don't know. It's just compl I just love to hear your comments about that. <laughs> and uh, some of the people you, you know, might have met or tell me stories of people you've met that are living kind of like that. And I'm not... Uh, looking down or, or, or at it at all, it's just kind of how do you they do it? Just like people like how do you RV? How do you live in an RV? How do you live in a boat? How do you uh, travel internationally? Um, it's the same kind of question. How do you live out in the uh, way out in the desert lands and stuff like that? And are they happy or did they do it because they had to? Um, I don't know. I just love to know that, um, you know, and it's probably just like RVing. There's no one way to do it. So there's probably more than one answer, I'm, I'm sure, of why people live in such desolate kind of areas, you might say. Um, and, you know, some are junky, but not all of them. I mean, it's just, they're just out there. So anyway, I, I always, I love to hear comments about that. So, um, this is also the old part of, uh, I gotta always remind you folks, we haven't got many messages lately. <laughs> Good, bad, or indifferent. Remember, you can always go to the site at RV Talk Radio, go to the contact button, and that's a private message will come to us. 
or you can just send a private email to me at rob, R-O-B, at rvtalkradio.com. Uh, and you can go to any of our Facebook, our private one, which is me and Sherry. Um, go to the top, and you'll see a little button that says message. RV Talk Radio has their own Facebook, and so does RV Travel Buddy. All of them on the top of the um, uh, Facebook page has a button that says message. And we get those right away. It comes right on our phone. And if you got something you want to ask or uh, uh, tell us about, I uh, would love to hear from you. And uh, give us something to bring up on the show. Especially if it's something that uh, is, you know, uh, you'd like us to cor- correct an address maybe. Or maybe I uh, uh, accidentally, and I certainly never tried to intentionally uh, um, hurt anybody's feelings or anything like that. So if I do, I certainly apologize. It's one of those ignorance things. Um, but, uh, you know, and, you know, we change our content every once in a while. We're not set in our ways, but occasionally a show might go off on a tangent a little bit. I think last week's show was kind of interesting. Like, <laughs> do dogs get homesick? And uh, so I still can't answer that question. And I didn't really get that many comments on it, probably because it wasn't that fascinating to people. But anyway, I just kind of wonder if dogs get homesick. So. And I never did get much comments on that. So once again, if you get a chance to comment and uh, talk to us, we'd love to hear from you. Another RV-related thing I wanted to talk about, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this, is, um, and I'm not spoofing it or anything, and, and I noticed this when we had our own social network, but is, you know, this new RV Village thing? Well, it's not new anymore, but been around. And we're members in it, and we try to tie in and stuff, but I... I I constantly get messages that there's activity going on, and I've read, you know, sh- I have it set up to show where we're staying and stuff. But I don't know what it is, but I just can't seem to get around to just logging back on and see what's going on. And I don't know. I guess it's, uh, I guess it's me. <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, you know, I'm hopping on to things like Facebook and 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 YouTube all the time, but some reason the RV village thing to log on, see what's going on. I, I, I don't know if I'm just too busy or, uh, what, but I'd love to hear how many people are using that and having, you know, and really like it. And it does look like a great tool and stuff, but it just, I don't know. Uh, uh, isn't working for me yet. <laughs> and, I guess I need to change my habits, but I kind of like to hear feedback from you guys on how um, involved you are with that particular um, platform. And I know the people that build it have great intentions behind it. Uh, I don't have a, I'm really not adding any suggestions on how to make it better um, other than, uh, I don't know, I'm just, I guess I just need to find a way to make it a habit of something I check in on just like I do with Facebook and my other things, but uh, um, I don't. I guess I find it too niche where it's totally about RVing, and then and then I don't. Know, some people I feel like go too deep into RVing, too deep into solar, too deep into certain things about RVing where it's almost to a point of taking the fun out of it. So I, I and I think I kind of do that with my own show is I try not to get too deep into one particular thing about RVing or, or all that, um, just to keep it from getting uh, to like oh my gosh solar again. Um, I'll talk about solar if something comes up, but I kind of talk about it and then it's gone. Poof. Um, I try not to. You know, there's a lot of great things that we or equipment we use. I don't just keep bringing it up like I. I I just feel like there's so many things out there, people trying to convert you to to their way of thinking. And uh, we're not trying to convert you to be an RVer. We're not trying to convert you to be a boater. We're just uh, telling you what we're doing and giving you ideas out there. And, and, and you're certainly welcome to come on out here. But uh, everybody's life is a little different. And it doesn't certainly, you know, what works for me and Sherry doesn't necessarily work for you. And just like we've tried to do a few things that we really admired by other people, finding out that's not feasible for us to do. Yes, we have a big interest in international traveling, 
and some international cruising, but our lifestyle, our particular situation says no right now. And I, I wish we could. And I know that you have the same scenario. You're probably uh, maybe in your 40s or 30s and want to kind of do what me and Sherry are doing. You're not there yet. Frustrating, I know. Uh, you know, and you can force it, but, uh, you know, is what you're giving up a little bit too much? That's the question. So, anyway. And there's all those other factors, grandkids, health, all those things, you know. So, I don't know. <laughs> I just don't know. Anyway, moving on here. It's getting to be about that time where we have to wrap up the show. I want to remind you that we do have our podcast every Monday. We try to launch it in the morning. Uh, a little tough the last two shows being on the road and uh, uh, not happy with the microphone I had, but... Yeah, make do. And uh, if you're truly one of our listeners, that in fact that we're spontaneous and we're doing what we're doing, sometimes we have to step down from the quality stuff uh, in order to stay mobile and still get the show out. So, yeah, the last two shows, the microphone was not the best. And I, I apologize. And it affected my videos, too, because we do some narration in our videos. And uh, it's not as clear on those two a couple of videos that we did on the road but it's sure nice to have our equipment back and uh, we'll be going off and on with different equipment but that's what makes us unique we're taking you along with us and sometimes we can't bring the really nice stuff with us uh, I don't dare so I do want to say thank you very much for listening and thank you for the comments we do get good you know good bad or indifferent um, we are really grateful for you. Where subscriptions on the podcast uh, is uh, hitting new um, records, and we appreciate that. Uh, our videos, or some folks just don't do the podcast thing, and they'll just listen to the video version of this. And uh, sometimes those are up and down, depends what it is. And I think it has to do with titles and stuff too. But our uh, our uh, loyal listeners, I can't thank you enough for being with us every week here we shoot from the hip we're not perfect i'm not a dj i'm just rob <laughs> rob and sherry with a cat and a dog doing some rving and then have resources to go along with it and we hope you enjoy that so we'll see you next monday uh episode 60 coming up we ask everybody to be safe stay in contact and we'll see you next monday bye now thank you for watching our videos Please take the time to subscribe and consider being a Patreon supporter. There is many more adventures and some big surprises coming in the future with your help. Thanks again.